PPP, public private partnerships. Scaling public private partnerships in meeting post COVID 19 business environment needs at the week of AFCFTA. Module four, appraising PPP projects. Outline, definition and purpose of project appraisal. Overview of the project appraisal process. Key appraisal areas. Appraising potential PPP projects. One, assessing project feasibility. Two, project economic viability. Environmental and social assessment. Assessing financial and economic viability. Assessing the ability to manage the project. Key expertise required in a PPP project appraisal. Definition and purpose of project appraisal. Definition. Project appraisal is a structured process of assessing the viability of a project or proposal. It involves calculating the ability of the project before committing resources to it. It is an efficient tool used for choosing the best project that would help to attain the goal. Project appraisal often involves making comparison between various options and this done by making use of any decision technique or economic appraisal technique. Project appraisal serves to filter out projects that do not meet the feasibility criteria, keeping them from being launched as PPPs and avoiding an expensive waste of resources or a failure to deliver the service. It checks various aspects of the proposed project before committing resources. This is particularly critical in situation of budget constraints. Appraisal enables decision makers to obtain critical projects. Project appraisal serves to filter out projects that do not meet the feasibility criteria, keeping them from being launched as PPPs and avoiding an expensive waste of resources or a failure to deliver the service. This is particularly critical in situation of budget constraints. Appraisal also enables to obtain critical project information required to move forward decision-making by providing an, is it sensible from an economic particle to procure the project as a PPP? How much will it cost? Is it affordable from the government's perspective? What are the main obstacles for the project implementation? Can they be overcome in a cost-effective manner? How? Overview of the project appraisal process. Identifying projects, appraising projects, structuring tender and contracts, tender and award, delivering and commissioning, operating and maintaining. Under appraising projects, a typical project appraisal, the project appraisal process. A typical project appraisal process involves a multiple steps. Step one, project contract is restructured. Restructuring a contract can take different twists based on the technical dynamics of the sector considered or the regulatory dynamics of the government. Step two, technical requirements are designed, that is providing adequate technical details about a project allows for a precise definition of the infrastructure design or service characteristics to be implemented whilst avoiding being too prescriptive. Step three, 
financial models are developed. This entails estimating the risk adjusted costs of the outputs from the technical requirement design alongside expected risk value. Step four, project is tested as feasible in several dimensions. User pays PPPs. They are a popular revenue regime for governments due to the practically neutral budgetary impact of such projects. Such projects based on the user pays model can be regarded or estimated as being over feasible. Government pays PPP indicates there should be things for which feasibility will be based on the budgetary capacity of the economy at the time, meets revenue regime. These are applicable in cases where user pay demand for the infrastructure or service is very price elastic and thus marginal increases in prices to reduce the total revenue. Step five, project social environmental impacts are identified. Such impacts arising from construction and operation can be both positive and negative. They may also include follow on effects beyond the immediate project area, as well as beyond the people directly associated with the project that is secondary impact. Hence, needing corresponding formal processes of approval depending on the nature of the impact. Step six, PPP suitability is confirmed. The purpose of PPP suitability assessment within a value for money contest is to indicate if a project will be more efficiently implemented under a PPP or under some from the perspective of the procurement interest of society. Procurement route is decided. The procurement route or strategy decided determines how the private sector partner will be selected and it focuses on developing an approach to procurement that helps obtain the best value for money. Decision to procure is made, green light, decision. The appraisal exercise reflected in the appraisal report should recommend one of the following four decisions to be made by the government body charged with making the final green light decision or procurement decision. The project should be procured as a PPP. The project creates economic value or should not be procured as a PPP in which case the traditional procurement route could be assessed. The project should not be procured at all and more information is required to make an effective recommendation. Key appraisal area. Economic feasibility. We are under economic disability, we have commercial feasibility. Private sector cash flows for the project under PPP delivery are assessed. Fiscal, public sector cash flows for the project under PPP delivery are assessed. Impact on government debt. Impact of the project as a PPP under the applicable public sector accounting regulations are assessed. Value for money, VSM. Public sector or user. Cash flows for the project under PPP delivery in comparison to public sector or user. Public sector or user cash flows for the project under PPP delivery in comparison to public sector or user cash flows for the project under traditional delivery are assessed. 
appraising potential PPP projects, assessing project feasibility. The project can then be tested for feasibility across several dimensions. One, technical feasibility. It asks the question, can the project be implemented as planned using proven technologies and without unreasonable technical risk? Legal feasibility. Are there any legal barriers to the project? For a PPP, this includes due diligence to identify any legal constraint preventing the government to enter into a PPP contract. Environmental and social sustainability. The environmental and social studies gives the state of the art for the environmental dimension and the national and donors environmental define the criteria to reach for the project. The gap between the state of the art and these criteria are integrated in an environmental and social management plan. Project economic viability. Many governments undertake some form of economic viability analysis, also known as social economic viability, to decide whether a proposed project is a good use of public resources. A project is economically viable if the economic benefits of the project exceed its economic cost when analyzed for society as a whole. The economic cost of the project are not the same as its financial costs. The external, externalities, positive or negative, are economic impacts that affect persons who are not necessarily part of the project, of the project scope. The economic benefits are a measure of the value the project will deliver to society as a whole. The revenue a project will generate is usually a lower bound estimate of its economic fact, economic benefits. However, benefits can be much higher than revenues. Environmental and social assessment. Potential damage to the environment and the impact on population are key issues when planning infrastructure projects. Besides the cost benefit analysis that determines whether the expected benefits of a project outweigh potential detrimental environmental and social impact, there is increasing recognition that the success of a project depends on managing ENS risk and impact effectively, in addition to managing its technical and financial aspects. Investment decisions increasingly include an assessment of the management of ENS risk and impact, not only when NDBs and international financial institutions are involved, but also when commercial banks and private equity firms are the source of financing. Furthermore, in many developing countries, international players require compliance with both national laws and international P&S standards developed by MDBs, which are sometimes more stringent than those embedded in national legislation. A key element in P&S risk management is the mitigation hierarchy, whereby priority is given to avoidance and minimization of impact. Where residential risk or impact remain, a compensation or, or offset is provided to support relocated persons and affected communities or to mitigate risk to the environment. ENS studies are necessary to determine how to mitigate this risk and impact and how to compensate those affected by them. The E and A student should address the whole life cycle and the projects, including design, 
construction, operation, and the commissioning. The assessment should consider sectoral and national policies, legislation and regulation, governance, frameworks, and environmental capacity. Introducing E and S risk management steps when structuring a PPP project can improve the quality of the project. Assessing financial and economic viability. The financial study is an important phase between, before starting your project, and it must decide on its profitability and on the possibility of financing it. Therefore, evaluate the estimated cost of the project, identify the financial risk of the project, develop its financing plan, analyze its financial balance, evaluate its profitability, identify sources of funding, both internal or external. A financial model is set to give all the financial projections with both cases and sensitivity tests to assess the robustness of the model. To evaluate, to evaluate the hypothesis of the model, several studies could be necessary, such as a technical study of the CAPES slash OPES or a market study and a willingness to pay study to identify the corporate price or demand for the revenues of the project. Assessing financial and economic viability. A project can be economically viable without being financially viable. In the cost test of PPPs, the economic and financial evaluation of the project allows decision makers to decide on the need or not to launch the project. For example, some, sec some sectors such as education and health have high economic value, but may not necessarily be financially profitable. The economic profitability criteria of the project can be linked to their input, to their ripple effect compared to other productive sectors of the economy. A scoring grid can thus be set up to assess the economic profitability of projects. This rating grid thus enables a state to decide to finance a project which is not financially viable in relation to the expected economic profitability. To fill, to fill the gap, the state may have to subsidize the initial investment of the project or the operational income linked to the operation of the project. A key objective of government in PPPs is to achieve value for money, BFM. Value for money means achieving the optimal combination of benefits and costs in delivering services. Many PPP programs require an assessment of whether a PPP is likely to offer better value for the public than traditional public procurement often called value for money analysis. A VFM analysis can be done for a specific PPP project and at the program level for projects with common characteristics. VFM analysis typically involves a combination of qualitative and quantitative approaches. Qualitative VFM analysis consists of sense checking the rationale for using a PPP. This involves asking whether a proposed project is of a type likely to be suitable 
for private financing and whether the conditions are in place for the PPP to achieve value for money. Some PPP programs also require quantitative assessment of value for money. This typically involves comparing the chosen PPP option against a public sector comparator. What that is, what the project cost would look like if delivered through traditional procurement. This comparison can be made in different ways. This comparison can be made in different ways. The most common is to compare the fiscal cost under the two options, comparing the risk adjusted cost to government of procuring the same project through traditional procurement to the expected cost to government of the PPP pre-procurement or the actual PPP bids post-procurement. Government needs to decide whether a PPP project is affordable and fiscally responsible given its fiscal constraints. Governments need to assess the fiscal affordability when they approach a PPP project so that they do not go to market with projects they cannot afford. Fiscal commitments can be either direct or contingent. Direct commitments are those the government knows it will have to make if the PPP project goes ahead. For example, the availability payments for a school PPP. Contingent payments are wounds that will only be made if certain events occur. For example, payments that may have to be made under a minimum traffic guarantee if traffic levels are below projections and a PPP highway or compensation in the event of early termination. Assessing fiscal implications. The value of the direct fiscal contribution required is the difference between the cost of the project, including a commercial return of capital invested. and the revenue the project can expect to earn from non-government sources such as user fees. The fiscal cost can be measured in different ways. Estimated payments in each year, that is the amount that the government expects to have to pay in each year of the contract, given the most likely project outcomes. This is the most useful measure when considering the budget impact of the project of the project net present value of payments if the government is committed to a stream of payments over the lifetime of the contract such as availability payments assessing the ability to manage the project a less common but still highly relevant component of project assessment focuses on the ability of the procuring authority to manage the delivery of the project, that is project preparation, tendering and contract management over the term of the PPP contract. This contract, this requires an appraisal of the current capacity of the procuring authority, including its leadership and the identification of future needs for gap analysis. The exercise should lead to the formulation of a credible plan drawing upon the resources of other government agencies and including the cost of hiring external experts and transaction advisors and of strengthening the leadership of the project team. Assessing the ability to manage the project. This assessment of the procuring authority should demonstrate that the project is appropriately resourced 
and that appropriate governance arrangements are in place. The project should have gone through a detailed planning exercise with a realistic timetable. Advisors The project should have gone through a detailed planning exercise with a realistic timetable. Advisors should have been hired and a risk register should have been prepared, showing the primary risks faced by the procurement and how they will be mitigated. There should also be a benefits realization plan. This plan should explain how the project will be evaluated and how project outcomes will be captured and monitored during the operational phase of the project. Key expertise required in the PPP project appraisal. Appraising a PPP project is a multidisciplinary process that requires feasibility assessment in the previous areas. These assessments should be conducted by a qualified team comprised of subject matter experts with experience in technical, economic, or financial, environmental, and legal areas. NB, it is critical that the project team be fully engaged right from the start of the appraisal phase. PPP pilot project assessment criteria sample prepared as part of the twinning project. This is sample PPP appraisal reports that can be assessed at the link below. Questions? Thank you. Participants? I encourage to kindly post their questions, comments, and contributions on the dedicated course discussion board. Thank you.